<coughs> and we appear to be streaming. How's everybody doing? I'm Z-Manzilla, and today I'm going to be continuing my work on drawing Psychotron. But first, before I do that, uh, I have to make sure I can see the chat. So you're going to have to give me just a moment while I set that up. All right, and uh, let's check our audio. How's our audio levels looking? All right, I'm audible, so that's that's a good thing. And let's go ahead and open up that live chat window. All right, there we go. Awesome sauce. How's everybody doing today? Well, I won't know until somebody actually comes in and checks me out. So um, if you can see me, go ahead and give me a chat, say, or you know, just say hi or whatever, and uh, we will get started here shortly. So, so uh, a little just run down what it is I'm doing today. Um, as some of you may know, I've been commissioned to draw a poster for Psychotron, which is a snap map created by J.R. Crash, who you may better well know as uh, as uh, Bopkins Plays Doom on YouTube. And hello, Isaac Herrera. How you doing? That's a funky uh, haircut you got there in your thing there. Kind of looks like you are, uh, you maybe run a small a small country uh, full of people who are a little bit uh, crazy, maybe malnourished. Um, well, good to see you in any case. And let's see here. So, um, yeah, looks like we're going to be getting started here very, very shortly. It's just a quick equipment check here. All right, so the pad seems to be on. That's good. I got my reference pictures where I need them. And away we go. So, all right, now today I'm going to be working on Psychotron himself. Uh, who, uh, if you look here in the the background here, you're going to see uh, there's sort of a scully face thing going on here. That's going to be Psychotron proper. Um, I'm going to be starting with his face today, and time permitting, going to try to get the hands done as well. And uh, everything is still sort of in rough skeletal form. Um, I'm going to be starting off by doing a, a blue pencil of the, uh, you know, try to get some of the finer details worked in before I lay down some ink. So uh, we're going to be working on that today. And then the... Um, uh, yeah, so, all right, let's, uh, where's my doggone layers window? There we go. And uh, just keeping an eye on my resources here, and okay, there we go. So let's, uh, let's clear some things out here so we can see what we're doing. And, all right, so. Let's put you right about here so I can see what I'm doing. Thank you. All right. All right. And that should be, yep, that's still visible. Good. Okay. And let's get ourselves a, a nice brush here. We're going to start off with some pencil, I think. Nice hard pencil. And about... Uh, yeah, give it about a two or a three. We'll do that in uh, blue. Got ourselves a nice blue to do. Okay. And uh, give us a little less opacity on that, please. Thank you. All right. There we go. So, all right. So now we need a new layer Psychotron blue pencil. Nice transparent layer we can draw on. And away we go. So, all right. So, Cyclotron has kind of a sort of a boxier face than I gave him credit for. So, I got to remember this is right about the bounding boxes here and comes up uh, not quite as herky jerky as that, but. My computer likes to do this weird herky-jerky thing, uh, so we need to sort of define where the top of that head is there. Svet Cookie, how you doing? I wonder what the color of the sketch layer tells you about an artist. Do you use green? I use pink. Also, hi. Hello, how you doing? Um, <coughs> I I don't know. I, I did all of the, um, the basic skeletons in different colors just so I could kind of separate them while I was drawing. Like, for instance, the uh, I did the uh, the, what do you call it, the, the, the mech that's going to be in the foreground. I did that sort of in a more pinkish color, and uh, I did uh, the, uh, the user avatar itself in sort of a, uh, a light blue. So, um, 
So I just I was just using different sort of extreme colors that show up better when you uh, when you shift them to different layers. So actually, it feels like it needs to come out even more. So that, that, he's got one hell of a chin, Psychotron. Probably the chinniest little skeleton you ain't uh, you have ever seen. Something more like like that, and then he's got sort of like these things that come out. Yay! So we'll get those in real quick, and uh, and so to do just to kind of give ourselves a guideline. So as we're working on the rest of this, he's got sort of a do wop on his head right here, which actually I think that's going to be no, no, it's going to be about right, about yay. where we put that sub in the gun. Alright, so. And then, um, eyes are sort of here-ish. We're going to have to work on that a little bit when we get to the, there we go. Uh, yeah, maybe a little more. Like yay. Hmm. Might have put those over a little too far. That's okay. It's just scribbles right now, so we can fix that by doing something like that. And uh, then uh, he got himself a little scully nosy right about yay. Little skeleton nosy. One of the things I really like about Psychotron is he's got all these little, like, sort of, like, uh, sort of things in here that remind me of Eddie from, from Iron Maiden. Of course, the character himself is based off of, um, uh, off of the work of Megadeth, but, I mean, you know, it's tangentially related, so. I guess he tells your schedule is more organized than mine. <laughs> um, yeah, I tend to, like, if I have to draw multiple people in the same picture uh, I'll give them all different colors so I can work on them separately that gives me more options later when I can sort of like move them around to get sort of like the proper framing that my my drawing didn't do I put them all on different layers and give them different colors and then sort of move them around uh, before I do my ink or actually sometimes I'll even go as far as like with this one I'm gonna be doing the ink uh, on separate layers as well which is pretty rare for me so um, but I, I really want to make sure that all the framing that I'm doing ends up working out in the final piece. So, I gotta be, gotta be precise about it. Okay, so now he's got sort of a, one of these dilly bobs here. Sort of like yay. And, uh, let's see. And, uh, sort of a, sort of a weird upper lip thing going on there. Which is weird to say, oh, the skeleton's upper lip. Like, when does that ever come up in conversation? Never. In fact, if the skeleton has an upper lip, start looking for a phylactery, because you're probably dealing with a lich. It's just a pro tip for anybody that runs into liches in their daily life. It doesn't come up for everybody, but for the folks it does, I'm sure they appreciate just a little bit of uh, heads up on some, some pro tips for identifying the liches in your life. that and then uh, this is weird because Psychotron only got 10 teeth total <laughs> it's easier for me you know I'd I'm if I'm not careful I'll end up like Rob Liefelding it up and just like adding like a million teeth you know so I gotta be be really careful I gave him all the teeth you know you woke up this morning and wonder why you couldn't chew your breakfast? It's because I gave your teeth to Rob Liefeld. Alright. 
right cell, and then sort of out there, there. And then, uh, okay. Now he does this really cool thing sometimes during the play of the board where um, he'll sort of cock one of his eyes, and so I'm trying to like kind of get that look going there. So like, uh, and then, uh, and then a lot more bigger for the other one. So. Um, yeah, I didn't like how that came out. Let's uh, let's address that, shall we? Back to you. All right, so that's a little closer to what we were looking for there still a little on the weird side but you know what he's a giant skeleton robot I uh, I feel like um, I can get away with just a little bit of anatomical incorrectness <laughs> yeah. Ramzer how you doing good to see you man thanks for for joining me over on YouTube uh, I would love to be streaming this over on Twitch but unfortunately um, the when I try to stream my drawings on Twitch, the quality is just butt. Uh, it's something about my computer really just doesn't like streaming things on Twitch. So for my drawing stuff, I have to stream it over on, on YouTube. And that sucks. I apologize about that. I would probably do all of my streaming on Twitch if I could, but... I mean, I'm absolutely positive I would do all my streaming on Twitch if I could. You know, so many more options are available to me there. But but I can't, so I don't. There you go. So He's got sort of another layer of iron plate that goes right about here. All right. And, um, yeah, so that's all the basic lines for the face there, um, and so I feel like I at least have enough on the face. Let's back back out here and, uh, let's see, I almost feel like the jaw could be longer, but... Some of this is going to have to get, I think, dulled down just a little bit anyway. Um, but yeah, for now, let's go ahead and put in the the shoulder supports here. Those are about here, and I, I I definitely see a straight line tool in my future for when I ink this part. Make things a whole mess easier on myself. All right, and then uh, those will be over here as well, but that's all going to get covered up by that hand, which, hey, you know, why don't we just go ahead and take a minute and uh, see about putting that hand in there. Fortunately, Psychotron's hands are pretty easy to do because they're pretty boxy, so... Funniest thing is, like, I, I mean, drawing hands is ridiculous anyway so but drawing psychotron's hands will actually be easier than normal i'm actually going to have to dumb them down a bit from <laughs> from what i'm doing to and the, oh that's right he's only got four fingers so he's like a cartoon character that way but is he's got like so those extra long robo fingers going on there so maybe i can cut that off right about here yeah. And he's got the cool thing going on on the back of his hand there where it kind of looks like a, sort of an iron plate. So, I'll just put the guidelines down for that. And. There we 
go. So that's roughly where the fingers are going to be. And yeah. Little cackling Skeletor guy. All right. Let's clear that out. Can't use that right now. All right. And. All right. What was it we were doing with the hand over here as well? Oh, yeah. I wanted it to be reaching out. So. Had a couple notes there for the hand I see. I didn't bother erasing. So we're just going to. I'm going to bebop it a little bit here. <laughs> How do you do a palm on this kind of a hand, I wonder? <laughs> you know, This is a really... Uh, it's a boxy hand, you know. Like I, it's uh, it's built entirely out of player blocking volumes. So it's there. We'll just uh, we'll improvise just a skosh here. There we go. And then of course his his ribs exposing the beating heart beneath. And. Uh, Again, all made of, like, super-duper iron, evil iron stuff there. And, of course, those are going to have to fade in a little bit as well. So, I mean, that's... But that's a lot of stuff's going to get sold when I'm doing the the color, the, the sort of ink and color layers there. And i got to remember that on the main picture there of the, of the player avatar, I did uh, basically sell it that I'm going to be doing some of the, the, sh the shading ink with ink. So, um, okay, so then in here I've got to make a big old gross heart. So, of course those are probably all going to get bathed in shadow anyway, so. But let's zoom back out real quick here. I need to, yeah, okay, so. Let's uh let's put that arm right about yay. And how does that look in the abstract there? So Yeah, that's those are the shapes I need, and then pretty much everything else is gonna be bathed in darkness, so I don't have to stress it too much. Now Yeah. And yeah, and yeah, that's gonna require some special mojo while I'm inking it. Uh, so I gotta be aware of that. Now, do I also want to, um, cause he's got kind of like a weird sort of spine thing going on down here and sort of like that. And those are all definitely be bathed in darkness by the by the time it's all over but I just want to check something real quick um, how far down are we going yep wow I'm, I'm probably gonna have to move the mech anyway so <laughs> I, I can see I'm working on details that are gonna get covered up if I'm not very careful here so Taylor head how you doing good to see you thank you very much I'm uh, really liking the way this is coming out uh, and uh, I'm really looking forward to slapping down some some ink here um, I really do feel like this, uh, some of the facial features are looking a little more thin than they would normally, but I feel like I have some leeway to, um, like here, if I, if I box up his head just a little bit more, I think on the top, then I can probably do a better job selling that. And then if I just get some curve, some nice curvatures in there during the ink. So, okay, let's go ahead and get rid of that layer. And uh, we'll knock the opacity down on this bad boy to about yay. Yeah, okay. Now we need a uh, Psychotron ink layer. So, 
Okay. And here is where the fun begins, kitties. So. Man, I would really love to have some music on this stream. I've tried that before in the past, but I have enough performance issues without trying to play music, you know? So, all right, we're going to take and do you. And then um, let's go ahead and start with a... Uh, let's... Uh, All right, let's go ahead and uh, do this. Okay, so we're on the ink layer pen five. Is that good? Okay, that is good. Okay. All right. Now for the fun part. All right. Actually, I just realized something. Uh, for the bigger abstract stuff, I'm going to want a thicker pen. So, mm, there we is. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Um, okay, that's right. And That's not. Okay. Well, that's what I need to do. I totally forgot to turn on my... Okay, so smooth is actually not helping me here. So, okay. It's literally making things too smooth. And then... Dog on it. Alright, and... Um, oh yeah. Okay. There we go. Like I said, I'm going to be fudging things a little bit on this one because, um, you know, I, I, I'm trying to like, yeah, I mean, obviously when you're working in, you know, player blocking volumes and snap maps, you don't have some of the same abilities you have normally. And, oh, that's right, i got to put the uh, these things in first. So to really sell that expression... That I'm trying to put on his face. There will be a little bit of fudging going on. Okay. For example, this eyebrow has got to be cocked slightly lower. stop for a sec. Oh, that's fine. Thanks, Taylorhead. Thanks for stopping by for a moment, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I always like it when folks want to keep me company while I'm drawing. Okay, so... Actually... I just realized I don't want to do all that in thick li in thick lines because, you know, you need thinner lines to really sell what's going on inside those eyes. Duck on. Okay. 
Okay. We'll go in and touch up those connections in a minute. Okay. There we go. Okay. So. fill all that in right now because we know it's going to get bathed in shadow. There we go. Now we can work on that whole upper lip area here. zoom out on this one get a little perspective on what's going on here I guess so all right so there we go yeah that's kind of what I was looking for I want that sort of bevel a little bit to kind of really sell like when you get to the chin and it just sticks right out course we can there's going to be some touch-ups going on in there with the uh, the fine pen once I get to that step um. Scully Town. Uh, that uh, doesn't really fit the theme, does it? Now, okay, so let's uh, let's revise. There we go. Yeah, and uh, and probably what we're gonna want to do is give him. Because, you know, thinner teeth really, in my opinion at least, just look creepier. Uh, 
Uh, that la no, doggone. Add the black behind those as soon as I get some uh, a better, uh, a smaller brush. I can touch that up a skosh. Alright. bit of inky poo right in there get some of that get some of that nice awesome darkness going on there that's gonna be fun to play with when I get the fine brush out on this side as well. Let's dig this YouTube. I'm actually showing Doom related stuff. And here you are not dinging me. Whoa. Sorry buddy. My dog sometimes likes to hang out under my, my desk. <laughs> and every once in a while I adjust my legs and he's all like, oh no, 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 that's not according to plan, buddy. So Gives me a little guff about it. Will you give me that guff, puppy dog? You just give it right on to me. You are so lucky you're cute. Let's go ahead and just a little more between the teeth there. Alright. Mm. If you get inky poo, call your doctor. Hey, look, man. When you eat as many octopus as I do, which is none, then yeah, it should be a little alarming, I guess. But It's a natural defense tactic. That's an absolutely true story. If you're ever getting mugged, the only surefire way to defend yourself in a non-lethal manner is to drop trowel right in front of him. Say, oh yeah, no, no, sure, I totally got my wallet. Oh, whoops, my pants fell down. Excuse me for a second while I bend over to pick them up. And while they're confused, just crap ink on them. Works every time. And if you're like me and you eat a lot of stuff with like strong colors in it, it works like one of those dye packs like banks have. So that means the cops later on can be like, well, can you identify the guy? It's like, oh yeah, well, he was... He was uh, about six foot four. He was armed with a knife, and uh, and they'll say, "Well, what, what, you know? Can you describe what race he was?" And I'll say, "That's profiling, sir." But I'll tell you this much: he's covered in orange ink, and smells a little like what I had for dinner last night. Why is that, sir, or madam? I think you know why. This is, is this your first day or something? I inked him. I inked him good. He is covered in my ink. Well, how do we know he didn't wash it off? Because I also eat a lot of glue, officer. I also eat a lot of glue. Why do you eat a lot of glue, sir? Hey, hey, hey. I'm not on trial here. So. And scene. The answer that the cop doesn't deserve, of course, is that, you know... Horse is delicious. I don't know. So, <clears throat> I'm waiting for YouTube to take this down for graphic material. I know, right? <laughs> I'd stop mugging anyone that did that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. How you doing, Liz? Good to see you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm like. Oh. Oh. That skeleton's too scary. We're limiting your monetization. It, sorry. You know, we got to protect the integrity of a site that has. 8 million people on it that post nothing but the Finger Family song over and over again. You know. I'll tell you, like the other day, I accidentally clicked 
accidentally because I like I saw something that was like, oh, Simpsons Futurama crossover. Somebody must have made a funny cartoon. I didn't think there was a such thing. No, it turns out there was a, actually an official Simpsons Futurama crossover done by the folks that do Simpsons and Futurama, fully voiced and everything. And somebody was showing it on YouTube and had like a hundred thousand hits or some craziness on that one video alone. And, you know, totally wasn't like an official channel of any sort at all. But no, 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 we got to go after the guy that gets a hundred hits for talking about shooting fictional demons. I'm streaming. It just uh, blows my mind. All right, so a couple of them. <laughs> but yeah, seriously, if you're ever mugged, poop ink on them. That'll give us some nice uh, places to put them shadows there. All right, and uh, do, what else do we got? Oh, yeah, there's more. I totally missed some of that stuff up near the head there, but we're gonna we're gonna end up fudging a lot of that anyway. So, because again, it's it's way up where almost nobody gonna see it. All right, and. Uh, then I think we'll fine line the rest. Of, oh no, we want to. Should at least get this thing in it in the head here. Fat inked. Ugh, that came out all wavy gravy, didn't it? All right. I'll tell you, man. Like, uh, if I'm on my period, I can throw a bloody pad at them too. Add to the scene. Oh, pff, well, of course. Sh shoot. I I'm surprised that uh, this is the first time this is even coming up. You know, well, what'd you do? I uh, well, you know, officer, it's like this. You know, I uh, threw a bloody maxi pad at him. We're gonna have to take you in, ma'am. Why? Because uh, we don't understand how female biology works, and we don't think periods exist. So, All right, what do we got here? Okay. Uh, I don't want to do that. So, <laughs> okay. Now, um, and then those are going to be uh, that. Those are just sort of to sh well. You know what? Maybe I should go ahead and black those in a little bit because that's there we go Boy, fine lining this one is gonna it's gonna have a lot of detail to it. I'm really looking forward to that. This is funny, I'd I always draw things looking forward to the next step. And I suppose that's a good way of doing it, you know. You're always sitting there and wow, you know, here I am inking this and going, man, it's gonna look good when I color it. And then like you you're coloring it as a man's gonna look good when I shade it. And then you shade it. It's going to be like, man, this sucks. I'm going to have to start over. No. <laughs> you are not an artist until you have doubted yourself a lot. Self-doubt is like a very important part of being an artist. Oh, my goodness. All right. Yeah. Bra. That's a scary dude. 
I didn't even know Bobkins was JR Crash until this morning. I'm scared to post my map IDs to him now. <laughs> Why? <laughs> He's awesome, man. He's he he provides some of the better feedback in my opinion. Like I, I really I like before I was like doing this thing super seriously, uh he was <coughs> he was uh doing reviews of my maps and I really enjoy his feedback methodology. Cause, you know, I mean lately <coughs> he's dot he's definitely gotten a little more frank with some of his, his reviews, which I enjoy. Uh, but, I mean, he's still fair and balanced, and he, he does work very hard to, uh, whenever he, he reviews a map to try to find, you know, this is what I liked about it, this is what I didn't like about it, you know. And it's like, and hey, you know, can't be scared of criticism. So. Okay, that's... Alright, let's see. There's the effect we're looking for. Very good. Okay. All right. Uh, put some more work into that mouth there. Open wide, Mr. Cyclotron. We're about to work on your teeth. Just to give it some little bit of depth there. There. <laughs> I like his feedback, but I like Plasma a bit more because he digs into my logic. I've only made one map and I'm proud so far, and I basically took all the notes and things for my next map. Constructive criticism is nice, definitely. Um, yeah, Plasma does that, and um, DirectX 231 will, will dig into your logic as well. And uh, I dig Plasma. He had some... Uh, he, uh, he, I was watching one of his videos the other day, and uh, he, was, he was coerced into playing Loose Screw. Uh, Liz, I think you were actually on that thread when, uh, <laughs> when uh, you know, the whole Loose... We were discussing the whole Loose Screw thing. And I love what he said about one of my maps. He goes, you know, I'd, personally, I, I think anybody that, like, you can, I forget what it was, but it was something along the lines of basically you can take any crappy map and make it better by making it arcade style. And it, he was like, and I was like, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> but, you know. And uh, I don't even think he's played Devil City Ransom yet, though, so I don't know. I got... I'm all for feedback, but hey, at the very least, meet me halfway and play the map before you feedback it, huh? <laughs> like, I actually found a video that gave negative feedback to, or that didn't like Devil City Ransom at, after playing it for like 10 minutes, and I was like, okay, well, thanks very much, and uh, I appreciate that feedback. Uh, could you please tell me exactly what it was that made you quit playing after 10 minutes? You know, it's like... And uh, I will use that information in my future maps to improve, you know. That's, that's what feedback's all about. I feel like maybe some of that was just a little too... Okay, there we go. Yeah, I got to keep in mind, too, that you know I still need to put stuff in for the, la li or the, the color layer. So, 
All right. Where are we at here? Okay. So... guys here. There we go. We need to get everyone's snap ID down. I don't know anyone. I don't even know who you made, who you made Devil City. Can't draw digitally at all. I can only do paper and pencil. Um, yeah, I mean, I had to. I pretty much had to relearn how to draw uh, once I got this Wacom tablet. Cause, but um, I'm really glad I did, obviously. So, oh. um, And it's still a little confusing at times. Um, because, you know... I'm used to when I'm drawing being able to spin the paper and I can't spin my monitor. I can spin the Wacom but my movements don't translate the way I think they're gonna. And it gets a little weird. So so I'm still getting the technique down. Doggone it. But uh but yeah, Devil City Ransom. That was me. That was uh, that was a uh, a fever dream that caught me for like a week and made me drop everything I was doing and start building a, a custom Geo City for reasons I did not completely understand. It's actually what's interesting about it was I built the city and then I put the city up and was like, hey, anybody can do whatever they want with this city. And the world was like, oh yeah, cool story, bro. And then like did nothing with it. And so then I was like, all right, fine, I'll do something with it. And I built Devil City Ransom. There we go, and uh, oh my goodness. And on top of everything else, like I said, I, like one of the problems with drawing on this particular computer is I have all kinds of issues with CPU on this one. I have no idea what's causing them. But one of the things that does cause me to, ha to cause to happen while I'm drawing is every once in a while my computer will just get obsessed with some process and will forget that I'm trying to draw something. And so my cursor starts jumping around like crazy. And then I have to... And that drives me a little batty. Uh, let's see how that turned out. Um... Okay, so that means I also have to kind of do the same thing on the other side now, doesn't it? Okay. And, yeah, that's why I can't zoom out too far. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Actually, it's how far back can we go on this? Because I'm starting to think I need to... Go just a wee bit simpler on the uh, on the line shading and let the color shading do its job. So uh, lost all my old work. I used to draw a lot of Deadpool. Not even a fan of Marvel. Yeah, Deadpool's a pretty interesting character visually. I can understand that. Can't do custom Geo or shit. Yeah, I, mean, I couldn't either at first. I I did a board called the Pain Train specifically because I was scared of doing custom Geo and decided to give it a try and. That's how I had to learn it. Like, uh, there are so many things I do in Snap Maps because I'm afraid to do them, so I just 
do a map with them and toss it out there and get some feedback. So, um, I'm trying to make a sequel to my first map and make it look like the surface of Mars. It gets tedious for me. Yeah, I mean, you know, I one of my problems is I just don't have a lot of time to work on maps anymore, uh, at least not until school starts again. But, I mean, I've, I've been working on the same map now for like a month and uh, trying to get some time to do that. And I, I'm going to have to do some major revisions to it as well. Ugh. Come on. Oh, my goodness. Ugh. Ah, thank you. Stupid finicky computer. There we go. So yeah, you should let me review your map sometime. You know, throw me uh, throw me some map IDs. I'll get you on the review schedule. I uh, I promise I'm gentle. <laughs> I love playing snap maps and I love giving advice and snap map reviews gives me the ability to do both. There we go. And then uh said thank you <laughs> small part of me doesn't want the cyber demon or spider mastermind and snipe snap map I feel like every map would have them in it it'd get boring that's exactly what I've been saying too like everybody that argues no we need the cyber demon it's like no you don't need the cyber demon you want the cyber demon and frankly if you can't build maps with the I mean I I have kind of a uh, I, I don't know I I hate to, to, I, I almost hate that I think this, but I think this. Um, and that's that people that feel like SnapMap doesn't have enough things that they quote-unquote need. Like, I mean, seriously, like, you know, I, I, I'm, of, I'm of the impression that it would be nice if there was more stuff in SnapMap. But I've played so many maps that prove there is more than enough in there to do cool stuff. And... If SnapMap doesn't do the thing, you still doesn't do the thing you think it needs to do or whatever, then you always have the option of trying something else. And that's the part people miss. They, they just get this, this sort of like th idea in their head that, no, you know, SnapMap sucks because I can't do this one specific thing. And it's like, no, like that's, that's ludicrous, you know. Sure, you can't do the one specific pet thing you were hoping you'd be able to do with it, but, you know, it's like, you know... It's, that just simply means that that's not what SnapMap is for, then, you know? Like, if you want to... Like, one guy telling me, oh, well, SnapMap doesn't let me resize the props. When some, somebody was arguing that, oh, SnapMap is dying because you can't resize props, and you can't change the base stats for the guns, and I'm like, why do you need to do those things? You are basically, you know, I mean, it's great. There are there are things you can do to change sort of the fundamental ways that a snap map performs or does things. But if you really need to make changes that drastic, why are you trying to build a snap map? Why are you not downloading Unity or Unreal Engine and just making your own video game? Because that sounds like that's really what you want to be able to do. And while I have joked from time to time that... Uh, uh, that snap maps is the closest thing we're ever going to get to a Fisher Price dev kit 
like it really like I'm serious when I say you know it's it's not a tool that was designed to do serious game development stuff you know it's it's for doing remixes you know it's like complaining that MTV Music Generator doesn't let you record your own you know guitar or something like that I mean I used to use uh, there was a yeah the, the program I used to use back in the day called MTV Music Generator that um you know, you could you could sort of it just had a bunch of sounds in it. And you could remix them, and you could get really creative with it. But I had friends that were like, "Yeah, but you can't." The you know you can the recordings you can use are only like twenty seconds, and or like the the you can record your own audio, but you can only record like twenty seconds of it. So you know it sucks and it's useless. And I'm sitting there going, "Well, no, it's just if you need to be able to record more than twenty seconds of audio and do all this like serious stuff." First of all, stop trying to use a PlayStation to produce your music. And second of all, you're not using the right tool, you know, so. <coughs> Plasma Botkins already reviewed it. So, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, definitely, uh, you know, send me, like, a message or something with your map ID in it so that I know where to find it, and I'll, I'll get you on the review schedule. Used to be a Halo 5 Forge nerd, and I told the community I wish it had AI, and everyone told me why it wouldn't work, so I left Halo and went to Doom. Yeah. I mean that's just it is like you know like if you know there's folks that are going to use halo forge and like what it does and the tool is fine for what they want to do if what you want to do is something snap map doesn't do then you know consider that maybe snap map is not the correct tool for what it is you want to do <laughs> you know you know i mean you know I got into a I got into it on the one of the forums with somebody that was kept saying, Oh yeah, Snap Map's dying because, you know you know, he kept just listing off all these like sort of things like, you know, um when you'd be able to resize the 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 props and stuff. I'm like or you could just build your own props out of custom geo. You know, <laughs> as a guy that spent literally an entire day building a kitchen in one of my snap maps like a use like seriously no use for it whatsoever but i built a kitchen and it was freaking awesome and if you play the pain train there's a section you can go into where you will see a fully detailed kitchen for like you know i mean down to the fact that it has a running water faucet in it you know and i, was, I had fun building that i don't need Beth Id to freaking stop everything they're doing to give me a sink asset. I will just build a sink out of custom geo if I want, you know. And uh, if you don't, if you don't know how to build stuff, and you really felt like, like say for instance, like I, you know, like you, so you sit there and go, well, I'm not good at custom geo, and I'm, so I'll sit there and I'll go, well, I am. Tell me what you need, and I'll build it for you and put it in my geo and props logic warehouse. You know, that's uh, that's the kind of stuff I do. Void Runner. Like, I mentioned in passing one day that I wanted to do a puzzle in one of my... I, I wanted to do a puzzle in a, a map I'm working on on the side that involves sort of breaking the fourth wall a little bit. And I was like, you know, man, it would be really cool if we could do hexagons in Custom Geo so that I could have, like, a bit where you're, like, you're literally in a, in a, gr a half-finished grid room and fighting a boss, and the way you beat the boss is you find, like, this string of logic that's making him invulnerable and destroy the logic string with a missile. Uh, but if there are no hexagons in 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 snap map props, so he spent the night building me a logic string out of custom geo, and so like I, you know look forward to me in a, in a future map doing that. I mean that's awesome. My boyfriend makes Arma three maps. I've never actually needed to scale props other than GUI. Yeah, agreed. You know, I've I've never once been like you know what I, this altar would be so much better if it was ten times bigger. You know, like I've never. I've never ever said that. And like I said, if it's like, okay, well, this prop that I'm trying to use doesn't have the dimensions I need, you know, my immediate response is, well, hey, I'll just build one out of custom geo, you know? Like, what's the problem, you know? When one person's sitting here and telling me Doom sucks because they can't, you know, have a, you know, they, they, they can't put down a prop gun that's five times bigger than a normal prop gun, and meanwhile you got guys like Vlad Kablitsky that are building statues out of Custom Geo. Yeah, maybe the problem isn't uh, Snap Map. <laughs> so. And like I said, there's a part of me that hates that, because I mean, I'm sitting here and I know, you know, not everybody is at the same skill level, you know, like not everybody wants to build things out of Custom Geo, you know. 
but you know it's that's it is what it is man i mean you know there's a you know i'm sort of the same way with art where i'm like well you know i can't i can't make you a perfect one-to-one painting of a glorious sunset but it doesn't stop me from enjoying like the the like I, i'm not going to diss art or mediums because i can't do it i'm gonna go look at the artists that can do it and either learn how they did it or just give up and you know just sit back and enjoy their work you know like wouldn't be art if it was easy you know <laughs> you know so I'm, I'm not familiar with arma 3 though what is that I have a feeling I just lost some nerd cred <laughs> I mean, the name sounds familiar, but I've, uh, I am not intimately familiar with what Arma 3 is, so. Ah, I don't got it. Beveling down at that point. Yeah, it's either my hand is weird or this pad is. Either way, I'll have to zoom in to compensate. There we go. Yeah. I'm pretty painfully average on my snap map skills because I've only recently got it, but it's fun when it all comes together, and I love the fact that 99% of errors come from yourself, unlike Halo 5. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that's that's the thing is, uh, I mean, there are certainly bugs in it still, like some pretty massive ones, in fact. Oh, my goodness. Um, sorry, give me just a moment. Hello. Hi. Hey, Ma. Um, I am working right now. I'm on a live stream. What's up? I did. Uh, Thank you. Did you, that did you watch that CD yet? Not yet. No, no, you definitely got it. I, I just, I'm a little slow to check my mail sometimes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Thank you again. I really appreciate that. Oh, give the baby a big hug and a kiss. Will do, Ma. And like I said, get her something for me. Will do. Okay. Okay, Ma. And she loves her pin. She loves her pin. Okay. All right, honey. I love you. And happy anniversary. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ma. I love you, too. Uh, love kiss, kiss, kiss. Kiss, kiss, Ma. We will. We'll do, Ma. Right, Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. There we go. Never say no to Mama. That's a That's a very important rule right there. Never say no to Mama. So... Armor 3 is a realistic military shooter where you die in like two hits and it was a pretty great editor. Has a pretty great editor. Well, hey, you know, that's awesome. Friggin', um, oh, way back in the day, I, I don't even know if this is near the same thing, but I used to play a uh, uh, turn-based strategy game called Warlords 2 that had a really fun editor in it. And... Um, it was uh, it was a whole lot of fun to to do because like you could go in there and like edit the individual sprites. It was that good. It really was awesome. So let's uh, to really make him look all machiney and borgy here. We need to add some of these doodads. Of 
Wish I still had contact with my parents. I'm sorry. I, uh, I, uh, I no longer speak to my father, but uh, my mom I always speak to. I am a, I'm a total mama's boy. I really am. She uh, is very supportive of me in many, many ways. I told a story once. Uh, I'll tell it again here, but uh, I did a video where I told a story about that included some information about how understanding my mom is. Um, so this all starts back when I was in sixth grade, and I was I, I used to live in this little ass town called Silver Creek, New York, and uh, it's just real, real small little town, grape country. And they, uh, they were about this. I was in sixth grade at the time, and the school was about to teach sex ed. And my dad, who's this like Republican right wing Christian person, says, No, nope, no, nope, uh, my son is not learning sex ed in school. But the subject came up of, Well, hey, you know, where's he going to learn it then? So, you know, my dad's a real DIY kind of person. So he was like, Okay, I'll teach him. So. My dad takes me down to this place, Hanford Bay, uh, which is like a, if you live in that area, um, it, it's sort of a it's a beach uh, that has like a really nice lighthouse on it. Looks really great during the sunset, and it's 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 all beautiful. He takes me down there and he goes, "Okay, there's something we need to talk about," and he takes out you know this textbook, this really thick ass textbook, starts showing me pictures of pregnant women. You know, this is what women look like when they're three months pregnant, and nine months pregnant, and all this other stuff. And then, and then after that, the the, the the baby comes out, and then you have to take care of it forever. And uh, you know, there you go. And I'm like, okay, well, great. Well, how does a girl get pregnant? And he goes, well, and it, it, this is a, not exactly verbatim, but I'm not going to leave out anything he said or include anything he didn't say. And he goes, well, you see, women get pregnant through sex. But all you need to know about sex is that women don't like it. They do not like sex. They pretend to like sex so that guys will have sex with them and get them pregnant. And then, you know, you, th then you have a kid with them and then you have to take care of them forever. But women don't actually like it. They're just using it to get pregnant. And I was like, fair enough. Now, you'll notice, A, at no point did my dad tell me, you know, how sex is performed. So, you know... I didn't know exactly, you know, I couldn't tell you, I couldn't t tell you for a very long time how sex was performed. I had no idea. And so just really any contact with a woman scared the crap out of me all throughout high school. And I literally just went out of my way to avoid them. If a woman was a, uh, showed even the least bit of interest in me, I would get very, very scared and like actively avoid her. So you can imagine what sort of an image this projected in high school <laughs> this boy that was very so not interested in girls that he would like you know go very far away to avoid them <coughs> excuse me sorry about that and um and so like yeah my senior year of high school comes along i haven't dated anyone ever and uh yeah and uh he uh, and my mom goes. So, who are you taking to prom? I go. Uh, oh, well, that's the other thing that's important to the story. Along the way, uh, in junior year of high school, I, I met this friend of mine that we're still friends today. We literally moved to the other side of the country together. His name's Jeff, and like I, I want to say something like within ten minutes of meeting each other, we were just like inseparable, just really, really good friends. And uh, he hung out at my house one night and like didn't leave for like three months. Like, I'm not even being, like, over-exaggerating or nothing. He, like, he was at my house so often that my mom bought me bunk beds. But anyway, senior year of high school, my mom comes to me. She goes, so, who are you taking to prom? I go, I ain't going to prom. She goes, why not? I say, why? You know, she's like, well, it's a it's sort of a landmark thing for you. You know, you're, you're, you know, you sort of close out high school by going to the prom. You know, like, uh, I just really kind of want to get my high school career over with. My, I kind of hate high school. And she goes, uh, well, okay, look, I think I understand, and, and I just want you to know that I love you very much, and I support you very much, and you know I will love you no matter what kind of person you are or whatever, but um, if you want to ask Jeff to go to the prom with you, it's okay with me. And I go, uh, Mom, why would I ask Jeff to go to the prom with me? He's my friend. 
She goes, look, I know you're gay and that you're dating Jeff. And I'm like, no, no, I am not dating Jeff. And, um, you know, she goes, well, you know, he's here all the time. I was like, well, yeah, we're friends, man. You know, she goes, well, look, I never see you with any girls. You're never asking any girls out. You never date. And, uh, you know, that sort of, con- you know, it makes me think that maybe you, you know, you're, you're gay. And I'm like, um, uh, it's not the case, Ma. I just, you know, I, I don't see any reason to uh, go out with girls or anything like that. She goes, well, you go out with girls for fun, you know. I was like, well, Mom, I have fun with my friends. What kind of a fun can I have? What kind of fun can I have with girls that I can't have with my friend, my guy friends? And she goes, you know. I go, Mom, well, I don't even know what you're talking about. Women don't even like sex. And she looks at me real close. And she goes, what are you talking about? Who told you that? You know, I said, women don't like sex. She says, who told you that? I say, Dad. I tell her the story, you know. And then she gets really quiet. And then after a few seconds, she looks at me and goes, "What? You know what, son? You're right. Women don't like sex with your father." And uh, true story. I lost my virginity a week later on my living room couch with my mom's roommate because it finally made sense to me why all my mom's friends kept chasing me around. They were cougars, you know. And I thought they were just trying to get me to get them pregnant. Yeah, <laughs> and I was scared of them, but I wasn't scared of them anymore. So, <laughs> so that's the true story of how I lost my virginity. So, <laughs> my Svet Cookie, what's with all the emojis? That's crazy. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely true story. So, my goodness, how far behind is this, uh, is this, uh, the, the, the stream lag in here? That's weird. That was a very informative story. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, uh, I've led a very weird life. I, uh. At one time in my life, my job description was literally sit in a box and get hit on the head with a hammer by children. That was an actual job I had at one point. I was a whack a troll at a at a local fair, and uh, let's just say the only reason I took that job is because I have some very um, I have some I have I had some friends at the time that really knew how to. Uh, push my, you know, my buttons and sort of cajole me into doing things under the guise of, well, it'll be creative and unusual. And I was like, yeah, well, it was creative and unusual. But then I almost got the crud beat out of me by that one kid who, like, was way bigger than, you know, a 10-year-old has any right to be and pounded the crud out of me. So... Also, I wish my parents could have been half as understanding as your mom was in that story. Yeah. No, that's... I'm telling you, man. Like, that alone like, I, make, means I, I just consider my mom an utter gem. She's very ap- accepting of who I am and always has been. Same goes for my brother, too. Although he's he's not so weird in any way, but he's definitely... Uh, he's got his own little quirks and issues. So... But mom has always been... Mama's always been there for us, and so that's why I'm always there for Mama. So that's uh, that's looking pretty good to me. I don't know about y'all, but I'm liking it. Let me see here. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah, I like I like how that came out. So definitely happy with the way that that face came out. So now though can't stop because this is bat country we got to do some of the other little details there and uh where to continue i wonder let's see i, pr- I probably would have been hanged my mother was very religious <laughs> yeah yeah that was i like here's what's weird is like when my mom and dad met neither one of them was very religious and then like my dad found religion ironically with the woman he cheated on my mom with which was absolutely hilarious Especially after she cheated on him, uh, after my stepmom cheated on him too. So, was, 
but uh very quirky story but my dad sticks to his guns on that stuff so um okay so I think next step is going to be but that, that I really like the way that came out I'm really happy with that I'm gonna I really it's unfortunate that I can't jump straight to the color on that one so uh, let's go ahead and work on this hand here in the foreground because in order to really sell its awesomeness, I think I need to put some fat, fat lines on it. All right. Let's see here. All right. Let's, uh... Well, let's see. Yeah, I think, uh... Let's go with a slightly fatter line for these these elements right here. Oh, yuck. Alright. Mm, nope. Mm, there it is. Oh, God, no. Alright. was I even th okay I see oh, okay duh Thankfully, I'm slowly rebuilding my relationship with my parents, but yeah, it took a bunch of terrible things happening in the past to get where we are now. Mm-hmm. I still ain't there yet with my dad. So I think YouTube is sponsoring Halo 5 and wiping the Snap Map videos. <laughs> that might be what's going on indeed. Would not surprise me. There is definitely some clear favoritism going on. I think they prefer Halo, Halo because what you're shooting there is like aliens and, you know... Yeah. So. So. Um. Okay. So where were we? I'm uh, distributing monies for pizzas. Okay. Excuse me. Oh, I can never get to that mute button fast enough. Uh. All right, there we go. <laughs> yeah, so definitely some uh, something a little kooky going on with. Uh, oh, stop it! All right, come on. Thank you. All right, so. I feel like this hand is going to come out a little weird. But. And that's actually going to be. Oh, stop it. Alright, there we go. So, yeah. 
It's the difference between demons and Halo. They still bleed like blue and purple blood. It's probably the glory kills. You know, I, I would not doubt... I mean, if they came back at me and was like, hey, you play a game that's got like these graphic things with you like literally like going face-to-face -face with a demon and popping its doggone head off, I'd be like, okay, that's an answer at least, you know? I, I, I like this. This is an answer. I can work with this, you know? I don't know what it is you don't like to see, and I mean, it won't... I'm, I mean, the very least, you know, I'll understand why I can't monetize my Doom videos, you know? But, you know, they don't even give you that much information. It just... It's ridiculous. Ah, uh, boy. Okay. I am. I'm really sorry. I got to do this. Um, I got to end the stream. Um, I'm really sorry. I can't tell you why. Um, I just it's gotta it's gotta stop. So, um, thank you very much for joining me. Um, if you have a commission you'd like me to do, please get a hold of me. Uh, I can certainly draw that for you. Uh, please be sure to check me out at. Um, uh, oh my God. Um, be sure to check me out at patreon.com slash zmanzilla uh, you're here on my YouTube channel you know where that is uh, follow me on Twitter that's uh, at zmanzilla uh, and uh, also I've got a vidme channel vid, vid.me slash zmanzilla please check that out as well just in case I disappear off of YouTube so um, very very sorry I gotta end the stream uh, th thank you very much for watching um, oh yeah um, hold on alright uh, and uh Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, and I do appreciate your your patience with me. Um, very, very sorry. Thank you so much for um, uh, for watching. Thanks. Bye bye.